Right, thank you for tuning in to Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. Today what I have in front of me is a AutoTech SS3500.4 Class AB amplifier that seems to have a starting issue. So I'm just going to give a quick rundown of this amplifier. It's pretty straightforward um, as uh, most of these Hyphonics amplifiers are pretty straightforward. So we do have a power supply section here consisting of four uh, 50 NO6 transistors that are driven from uh, 47 ohm gate resistors using the classic diode transistor drive circuit here coming off of a TL494 drive IC uh, the protection circuit here in front of it rectifiers and then you do have your four channels uh, the output consists of a C5198 and an A1941 now these are transistors that you will commonly see on the uh, Hyphonics amplifiers on their class ABs uh, so if you decide to repair uh, Maxonics amplifiers, you're going to need to find yourself a good source of these uh, 1941s and the 5198s uh, for their Class AB amplifiers. Um, otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. You have a drive circuit for each channel. Uh, you have your preamp section. So you have your plus and minus 15 volt circuit here right at these Zener diodes. So that's pretty much the rundown of this particular amplifier. Um, the rail caps are 2200 microfarad 35 volt capacitors. A relatively small uh, rail voltage that we're dealing with here obviously that you can tell just by looking at the voltage of the rail capacitors. You're not dealing with more than 35 volts of rail voltage. So these are relatively safe to work on. So what I'm going to do is uh, just fire this up here and we're going to see what's going on with this amplifier. So initially the green light turns on. Uh, let me see. Let me see if I can capture on the scope there on the upper uh, left hand corner of your screen there. Let me see what I, I can capture what's going on with the voltage here. So I'm just going to measure at the center leg of the rectifiers and see oh, as soon as I ground my scope actually. Let me ground the scope here. I. So I'm going to check the center leg of the rectifiers to see what's going on with the rail voltage here. So we are, the drive signal is creating rail voltage. So we should be able to fire this up. Let me uh, fire up my imaging camera here just to make sure that my output transistors don't heat up and have thermal runaway on me. Oh, and if you guys want to know a little hint about the uh, TG167 thermal imager, if you buy this and you realize that the image is complete garbage when you fire it up, take a, just pull the trigger once, click, click a snapshot, hit delete, and you will see that the image is a lot clearer. Than when you first boot this up um, i've done the i've tried the firmware updates and all this and it's just an imaging i think it's a firmware issue um, on this imager in particular um, and i can show you here let me show you real quick here what i'm talking about so i just turned it off and now i'm going to turn it back on and uh, i'll show you that what the image looks like this is what the image looks like when you first boot it up like 
Can you recognize anything on that? I can't. But if I snap a picture, delete the picture, oh look, now we have uh, we have images that we can recognize on the screen. So uh, just a little hint there if you guys do decide to buy one of these 167s is just um, take a picture first, delete it, and then it goes back to normal. All right. And again, through the powers of YouTube, I have one at a time pulled an output trans uh, pair of output transistors. So I started off with this set back over here, and then I pulled, and then I checked for uh, the short, and it was still there. So I re and then I pulled this set, it was still there. Then I pulled this set here, and now I have my green light on constant and on the scope you can see that we do have our 50 Hertz signal on uh, channels 3 and 4 and then I do have signal on channel 1 so this is channel 2 so that's the channel we are interested in is channel 2 so again, we do have our 50 hertz signal uh, going into channel one. And I'm gonna label this one channel one and I'm gonna label this one channel two. That way I keep things straight with my RCA inputs um, when I'm trying to hunt down what the problem is in the emitter follower pairs here. So typically what's going to happen is you're going to get a transistor that is going to be relatively hotter than the other. Uh, you can go around and check the emitter collectors of the transistors if you would like to investigate how the signal is run, how it passes through. And I'm just going to zoom down in on my drive circuit here. Let's see here. What I've got is this transistor right here is the hottest. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little mark on the top of that transistor. Yeah, so it looks like we're going to have this one, this one, and this one right here. These three, which makes sense. So more than likely, it's going to be the center one of those three that is bad. So again, this is a class AB amplifier and I kind of get picky when it comes to when it replacing the transistors in the circuit. Um, I do have a curve tracer and I match the transistors in the channel uh, the closest that I can get it. So even though I know that my problem is here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace uh, both sides of this uh, meter follower pair. I'm going to replace them all to make sure that they're matched because I don't want huge differences in gains uh, between the two and between the other channels. I want to keep my output voltages as close as possible to all the other channels. 
So if I can match these close to these, then I know that I'm going to have a good channel here. And then of course, um, when this is all done and put back together, I'm going to run it through my harmonic distortion analyzer uh, to check, uh, to see where my harmonics are on that particular channel, uh, just to make sure that it's as clean as I can make it. So that's going to be pretty much part one of this board, because from here, like I said, it's going to go into matching transistors. Um, I'm not sure if a lot of techs do that, but I do. Uh, I like to be able to provide uh, a great product. So this will uh, conclude part one. So I'm going to break this into two parts. And then what we'll do is we'll go through the matching uh, process. Well, I really... And then what I'm going to do, this will conclude part one. And in part two, what I'll do is I will match up the transistors and we will get these replaced and get this channel up and running again. So I'll be right back with you. Thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe if you like this content. Check out my website, ellensburgamplifier.com. Uh, I do have some amplifiers there that are always up for sale at prices that you really can't beat and uh, soon I will have parts available. If you have any suggestions that you'd like to see uh, up for sale or available on my website, please let me know down below and uh, I will do my best to include that. Thank you for watching. I will catch you on the next one.